Welcome, everybody. Welcome back to our Sunday Truth Talk. My name is Jonah Brindis. I'm a living true self radio, and today I want to speak to you, with you, about the mechanics of self-healing. I will try to cram in a very complex subject here into this Truth Talk, so I hope you'll bear with me. I'm going to talk about what we believe needs healing and how we can approach this. So I'm trying to assist you here with coming up with a roadmap, maybe identifying where you can start and what you can do. What comes up first when you think about wanting to make changes? Let's say you were in the position that you could literally make changes here for the world, for the people, for yourself. What comes up first? What would you change? I'm going to give you a few hints here how to approach this obviously we have a corona situation here that has already brought massive changes to our lives and most of these changes aren't of our making right so we feel a little bit a victim of our circumstances so there's outer things there's external things that are influencing us that are influencing the, the 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 whole collective right now and the state of being but then there's also internal aspects so my question is gearing towards what do you think needs to be approached first so here come in the first answers connection within needs to be changed first standing stronger than ever in our own center and self-love i love that embodiment becky you're saying that you would change your perspective first That's a very complex answer because that already implies that you are recognizing that there's something with the way you're seeing it, with your perception of things. Annette would change connecting with the heart more instead of with the mind. Obviously, you guys here as my regular audience are already trained in looking at things from a certain perspective, namely from the internal and the external perspective. And maybe some of you have already experienced that when we focus on external things, it can kind of make us feel helpless and powerless and also lead to this this problem that we discussed in a previous Truth Talk, namely, can we even trust in ourselves making these choices? If we see everything as an external influence all right then we are also becoming more victim or more passive in this and as you the word has given it away you know can can see already my objective here today in this truth talk is to motivate you to go more into self-healing self-healing with the emphasis on self this, this does not mean that everything that is wrong is wrong with you and you have to change everything with yourself. This isn't where this is going. Don't worry. Where this is going is to enable you to feel the, the courage and also the, the motivation and ultimately the strength to know that you can change things, not just internal things, also external things. We have a lot of power here, guys, as individuals. But we're seeing more and more how everything is connected. So as we are going through these massive changes right now, and I want to give you guys a little bit of a, of a, of a more positive outlook here also on the, the corona situation and what this is doing to us right now. I talk a lot about this and I'm, I keep emphasizing that this isn't going to go away and you know that we're going to have to deal with this for two, three years, right? But there's also a lot of hope, guys. Latest by 2025, 26, there is an energetic constellation here for all of us that feels like explosively shifting and changing everything, you know, into a more harmonious, more peaceful and more prosperous future. So let us sort this a little bit and look at the, the timelines here that we are confronted with as an opportunity, as an opportunity to learn, an opportunity to change, and especially as an opportunity to self-heal. Yes, empowering. 
So self-empowering is uh, are kind of the, the, the key words here. But if we look at the world, that obviously does need healing. I mean, whether it's our social things, our political things, our env environmental things, the economical things, educational things, science, religion, ethnic things. I mean, there is imbalance on all these levels. And we already know this. How do we know this? Because we already know, and this is not just sort of knowledge that informs us about this is a knowing that this isn't self-sustaining. We cannot keep this up. And so if we want to change these outer conditions, all right, then of course we feel small because we feel like, okay, this is so much bigger than me. How can I make an impact? But if I look at all the internal things that I can change, for instance, my attitude to certain things, my self-awareness, then I will begin to see that, yeah, I do, I can make changes in my life that can also affect others. Did you guys know that every person on average, a normal person here in this Western world, has an impact, an influence on two million people? They've measured this once. This is just us being us. All right. Now, those of us who go out, like myself, for instance, here as a, as a sort of a radio or a transmitter, that's an extreme, okay, to go out in public has a much larger influence. But when it comes to us, to ourselves, stepping into our own self-awareness multiplies the effect, the impact that we have. So when it comes to attitude of what needs to be changed, we are immediately running into issues, and that is that we don't really know what we can change or that we don't trust in what we can change. And that's an attitude problem. That's a mindset problem, guys. The other thing is that we often think that, you know, and this is part of our human dualism and uh, sort of the, the patriarchal setting that we are in, is that the way to go about things that, that are wrong or flawed or that are not peaceful is to eradicate it, to remove it, okay? This is a masculine approach. We'll get to this here in a little bit because that has a lot to do with our inner balance as well. What we learn, though, from, from observing the mechanics of healing, though, is that it's way more complex. Take a disease. A disease is, is a 3D manifestation of an imbalance or a separation within all right, that naturally actually wants to be in harmony, wants to be in peace, that also wants to be in harmony with its own environment, okay? So we want to exist in our own environment without, you know, having to fight against a disease. And this is one of the things that you can see really well right now through this COVID-19 occurrence here in our, in our world, that uh, we are very limited here in our approach if we think only in terms of fighting against or eradicating. This is a pure masculine approach. The feminine approach, and this is the part that uh, collectively we all need to, to internalize a little more, is the, the going into the wider space, giving it more space to heal, to nurture it, to strengthen it from within. So if you will, this uh, internal, external kind of conflict that we have sometimes represents our inner conflicts in regards to our masculine and feminine approaches. And if we want to look at the, the opportunities that we have here and, and not fight against, you know, something within ourselves or something uh, outside of ourselves, then we need to change our attitude. We need to change our perspective, as Becky said it. We need to begin to see healing not as the absence of pain or the absence of darkness or the absence of something that, that isn't in harmony, that is separated, but the presence of harmony, the presence of love, the presence of light. And that opens up a whole new way of looking at things. Because then we realize that healing is actually not focused on eradicating flaws, but that healing means to mend or to unify what is fragmented, what is isolated, what is separated. And therefore self-healing is the process of actively self 
connecting with, removing, and integrating all everything about me and the conditions that I am in so that I can go into a more connected, more holistically sustaining and harmonic way of living with my environment. It is basically, you know, changing the attitude towards myself, the world, and myself interacting with the world, you know, where I go into relationship with the environment. And this, of course, includes other people. And there are different levels of expression of that. And that's why it's so important to really go a little more into detail here and to sink the, our attitude about healing all the way to the end. Because you can discover sort of moral programming in there. Okay? Healing is not about eradicating flaws. Healing is about remembering that there is a wholeness within, and this wholeness also extends to the whole entire world, the connectedness, the oneness that we feel. And especially in times like this where we realize that, you know, the subjects that we are, you know, that are at hand, that those are global subjects, those are subjects of connectedness within our societies, within our political, economical, environmental, social systems, that this wholeness needs to be reinstated. And it starts within. And some of the aspects that I've already brought up here that are working against us, right, are these aspects where we are fragmented within, where we are separated within, for instance, from our own power to heal, from our own trust in ourselves, from our own courage, from our hope, from all these these empowering energies, right, that can that can make us believe that we can make a difference, that we can make a difference in our own life, but perhaps even in our in other people's lives. Maybe not save the world. That is a, a different imbalance, all right, but you know, changing the world from inside out. This is basically sort of the era that we are entering now. It's it's the the era of recognizing how much can actually be changed from within and that there is a, a natural um, tendency. Um, it's in energy work, we call this coherence and synergy and this n natural uh, tendency to wanting to come together, to wanting to connect, to wanting to heal. All right, this is what our whole entire uh, ecology, evolution, and so forth is actually based on. Nature has this way that it always finds ways, okay? It always finds ways to adapt and to heal, but not in the sense of that uh, whatever needs to be healed was wrong, all right? But in the sense that it wasn't optimal, it wasn't self-sustaining, perhaps. And that's why we have the science of ecology that literally observes, you know, the dynamics of the, this constant adaptation and constant evolution process. And what works against us internally within ourselves, guys, is our own human duality. And, and one part of our inner duality is the masculine and feminine, you know, this all or nothing, right or wrong. And why do I bring this in context with masculine and feminine? Because it has to do with how we view things. Okay, we can hone in on one problem and we can identify a problem and say, oh, this is the problem, and then focus everything on that. That would be the masculine approach. Or we can go into the larger, into the more holistic, more connected point of view and say, and look at how this is all connected with another. And then we'll see that changing one thing is not necessarily what, what makes a big difference. How many times have you uh, made changes in your life, guys, where you've noticed, okay, I can exchange where I live. I can exchange the, the partner that I'm with and move to a different country. I can I do all these, these outer changes. And yet, the inner condition always stays the same. And this is the part here that I'm trying to shed a little more light in for you by showing you the ways that healing and improving and 
regaining your own power and taking charge of your life, how this can be accomplished. It's not that hard. We just have to see really what is working against it within ourselves. And that's this human duality, okay? We all live with this huge, big contradiction, you know, the, the core of all unpeace in us, right? That we have this mortal body that, that, that has an expiration date on it. But at the same time, we also feel the presence of our eternal consciousness, our soul, all right? And that creates a lot of inner friction, inner disharmony, inner imbalance, all right, and some of these terms here that, that, that have to do with energy healing but also with psychology that um, <clears throat> manifest throughout our lives. For instance, we all form something like a false self, all right, and the false self is, is, the, is the self that, that we, uh, you know, sort of invest in as the highest chance of, of getting along, of surviving our life, all right. But it, it actually comes from the place of being a victim and, and not really seeing ourselves as being able to change something. This is very normal. We adapt, we conform, you know, and that forms, you know, sort of false aspects in ourselves. And then we have this whole cluster of ego and the ego is the survivor in us, okay? The ego says, all right, if I, if I just do that, then I can better deal with all of these uh, circumstances or these, and, and if I you know, uh, apply, you know, <clears throat> everything that, uh, you know, self-gain or self-centeredness or self, you know, then my chances are higher. So that's the, the survivor in us. And then we also have, and this is the part here that uh, shifts uh, basically the, the attitude towards ourselves, probably in the most dramatic way. And that is the true self part, the authentic part that we have. And that's the part that's really the thriver in us. Because that's the part that can show us, you know, ways that are more harmonic, that are more natural for us. All right, in, in energy lingo, I often point at, at words such as uh, tapping into your inner power, tapping into your inner medicine, tapping into this natural self-healing, self-correcting and self-growth energy inside of you. And then we have even more in us we have this soul self in us all right that can inform us about the the larger aspects of humanity that maybe some of you i know have this spiritual awareness that maybe came here for a larger you know purpose if you will you know where we can tune into the inspirer in us it's the it's the part in us that gets inspired and through the process of expressing this to others bringing us out in the world inspires others. This is uh, linking into the, to the, 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 in the, the, the circle of influence that we have, right? The stronger we are connected with our soul self, with our true self, and learn, you know, the, 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 the parts within ourselves that are actually working against it, the, the greater our impact becomes. And this can be silent impact. This doesn't mean that everybody has to go out and do live streams. It has nothing to do with this. Impact has to do with your overall state, interacting with your environment. And we interact with our environment at any moment of our lives. This is part of our uh, divine template, if you will. We cannot isolate ourselves. So any kind of attitude towards ourselves that sees ourselves singled out, separated, okay, from the larger power that is, that is sort of driving the whole world, the whole universe, okay, is counterproductive. So making self-healing changes does not refer to, you know, what is wrong with me, what, what is not enough in me, where uh, am I not good enough, where am I flawed, what are, you know, uh, the things that I'm born into, say, my, my, my direct uh, conditions that I have nothing to do with, really. Self-healing means to see all this, to zoom out, and to recognize where you can come into more harmony, where you can go into more connection. And in the process, yes, you will also have to 
clearer things. You will also have to remove things that are counterproductive, that are not self-sustaining, that are not based on truth, that are actually going against you. Okay, and we can really, I, I like to divide this into three different parts, okay? This is how can we change our conditions, all right? Our own conditions, circumstances, you know, or the manifestations of our life. How can we change how we see the world and ourselves in it, the context the, the way we perceive our reality, and how can we then ultimately manifest a healthier, a more congruent, a truer, a more self-sustaining, more fulfilling life that provides us with the necessary life force, with the necessary energy, motivation, joy, and lovingness to bring all this here into this world. And there are mechanics to this, and I want to guide you through these different layers of ourself here now that might inspire you to find out where you can tweak all this a little bit, all right? And you can already tell when we talk about perception and so forth, there's a very subjective aspect to this, because what you will find out is that healing, you know, as in mending and reunifying things, it's always relative to where you're at. Right? There is no right or wrong. There is no one answer, guys. That's, that's the illusion of the ego. The ego always thinks that it knows better, <laughs> that it has it all figured out, and that that's the only way. I can give you already the hint that if you ever, and I get stuck in that many times a day, so just so to give you a benchmark here, think that there's only one way Okay, you're already off in your survival mode. You're already stuck in your ego. Or if you think in terms of either or, all or nothing, same thing. That comes out of your duality. That is separated. That is not whole. Someone who is, has a more holistic and self-healing attitude towards oneself will always see at, at least three options. Okay, there is the yes, no, and then maybe the it's not the right time yet. I still have to wait till I get a clear yes or no, because those are also options. But that doesn't mean that, you know, always staying in the median and not doing anything is self-healing. That is, you know, can also be part of our ego's deception, namely that we are, you know, not making any mistakes. Not making mistakes is not the definition of a self-sustaining or happy and fulfilling life. Not making mistakes is a fear, is an ego fear. And that's solely based on the attitude, all or nothing, right or wrong. And if you go a little deeper here, you'll see that it's actually linked to an opinion. It's an opinion. Right or wrong is an opinion, but... You know, it's something that you may have been conditioned with, that you may have been programmed with, that you, you know, you don't know any better. How can you know? All right. And this is why we divide the overall mechanics of self-healing into five different processes. The first process is to actually look at your current condition. And when I say condition, I mean physically, emotionally, mentally, socially, spiritually and energetically and this is what we hear trans called called truth training all right it's basically self-awareness training where you learn to go into more truth in your own situation let's use an example here with the corona situation okay what is your overall condition let's say you're a normal healthy person and you have somewhat a healthy lifestyle according to what you know according to what your opinions are Okay, and suddenly we have this situation where everybody is telling you, oh my God, there's a deadly virus and uh, so many people who get it, they die. How does this affect your condition? It is making you feel helpless. It is making you feel powerless. It is making you more susceptible to 
something from the outside because it actually lowers your integrity it lowers your your state of wholeness you're now beginning to have a lot of emotions a lot of thoughts and a lot of physical symptoms too all right that you know sort of put you in this frazzled disharmonic state with yourself did you guys all go through this in the beginning when uh, when we had uh, you know the sort of the realization that that this is big and that this is affecting everybody how just the mere news the mere awareness of of the the pandemic has already changed your conditions in a negative way now outer conditions inner conditions those are things that we have to become a little more aware of if we actually want to make active changes we have to find out what it actually is that is impacting me what what it is that lowers my vibration and how that happens within me it's a little different with everyone and so this this first sort of phase of of becoming more aware of your condition is to learn to differentiate between your sensing, uh, you know, your, your five senses, your physical information that comes in, emoting, what, it, what comes out as an emotional sort of impact that, that your senses or your thoughts have, thinking and feeling. Those are four different things, guys. Four different things that are happening in you within a split second at any moment of time. All right, so when you want to uh, f find out what actually changes your condition, you have to learn the, 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 the vocabulary of that and become a bit more honest with yourself as well. Feel into, you know, what am I actually sensing right now? What am I actually emoting right now? What are my emotions right now? What am I actually thinking right now? What kind of opinions do I have? What kind of projection does this uh, produce in me? And then what is my overall feeling? Why is this so important? Because, <clears throat> look, whether or not we get sick or we get impacted uh, by an outer condition has a lot to do with our inner condition. All right? So the example of the sunflower that can uh, rest in, in dirt for thousands, hundreds, thousands, millions of years without ever actually coming into you know, unfoldment into a sunflower until until that one moment when the conditions are right, the outer conditions, when there's enough water, there's enough sunlight, enough nutrients. And all of a sudden, the information that is in that sunflower seed comes to an unfoldment. And this is the same with self-healing, all right? If our outer conditions lower our ability to express our true power, well then, you know, we, we basically can't flourish, okay? And then we, you know, either don't come to an expression at all, or we feel, you know, relative to how we felt before, we feel minimized, we feel like uh, we don't have any power, okay? So I don't know if you could follow me here, but the, the point of that is, is that whether or not we are being affected by an outer condition always depends on our inner condition. Every scientist knows that, every programmer knows that, every um, uh, worker knows that, every baker knows that, every mother knows that. It's not that simple. The life is not that simple to just divide it into right or wrong, all or nothing. That's not how this goes. All right, One and the same thing today can leave you, you know, just sort of in a state of calm and the exact same condition tomorrow because you didn't sleep enough, you didn't drink enough, you had bad food or you just had a quarrel with your partner or, you know, you, were, you, were, uh, you, you lost your job can have a huge impact on you. So this is the first phase of realization here really that your inner condition has a lot to do with your outer conditions and that your true power isn't changing your inner condition. The second phase is, you know, to, to look at your approaches. Uh, how do you normally approach things? All right, what are these existing programs in you, these habits that we have? All right, maybe they're counterproductive. Has any one of you ever discovered self-sabotage mechanisms in you? So what blocks my self-healing? 
All right, this is the part here that uh, becomes a little cringy for people because you have to kind of take an inventory a bit and look at, you know, where am I actually blocked? Or, you know, where am I having habits, you know, coping ha habits such as addictions, for instance, or not just substance, but also behavioral addictions, all right, that, that can really make me, you know, act out in, in, in ways against my better knowing. I mean, guys... Just knowing what is right is no guarantee. This, has, this is just an opinion, okay? It's just a mindset, but it's not really the, the, the change that you want. The change comes through recognizing really what it is that blocks you. And here is where most of us need a professional, need some kind of third party to help us with that. Because when we are blocked, it means that there is something we're not seeing. It has to do with our perception. Not with right or wrong. It has to do with our perception. And perception often needs sort of a mirror or a reflection for a soul that we can better see this. So this is where therapists come in, body workers, um, energy coaches, energy healers, and so forth. All right. This is sort of a little bit of, of, of um, you know, tidying up, you know, clearing things. But for, mo for the most part, really just to remove the blocks of perception because if we can't really see what the problem is how can we change it this is where most of you get stuck guys Be and that's why you feel that you can't trust in yourself and that's why you feel powerless because you you really don't see how you could change anything that would make a difference and the reason for that is not because you're not good enough it's not because you don't have the power to do that the reason is your perception there is a censoring, a filtering, some kind of blinds, you know, blind spots going on that prevent you from actually seeing what needs to be cleared. Okay, this is why I so often emphasize that self-healing and also, of course, uh, spiritual and personal growth is really not the, the process of acquiring or needing or having or even being something it's the process of letting go. It's the process of shedding. It's removing the clouds that don't allow us to see the sun. The, the third stage of self-healing is then really working on the parameters, so tweaking the parameters, you know, seeing where we have limitations, where things are not self-sustaining and, uh, you know, in, in a deeper level also where they're really not based on truth. This has to do with checking on our congruence. Are we even saying? Are we even doing? Are we even clear about what we're truly feeling and what we truly want and what we truly need? This is then when we become more aware of the quality of our choices. How many times do we catch ourselves making life's choices often against our better knowing or our inner instinct, okay, that are not congruent with what we truly want. How many times do we say things we don't really want to say or don't say things that we actually say, want to say? How many times do we suppress our own needs? How hard it is, you know, do you, do, are you aware how hard it is sometimes to actually just Know what you truly want. A lot of you guys get stuck here as well. Not actually knowing what you want. And that's why all your manifestations are kind of erratic. They're incongruent. But it's like you're sending out mixed messages through your choices. And this stage of, of self-healing is called alignment. This is when we have to learn how to become more aware of this in every moment. Okay, when we make choices. And this is, this is obviously done through uh, you know, tools such as calming down, slowing down, breathing, mindfulness, yoga, all these modalities that we've all heard about. You know, they help us with this because we need to slow down. Most of our, our incongruencies, you know, where, where what we do and what we truly feel doesn't match up, come from, you know, just the pace of things. They come from this haste. And also from outer pressures sometimes that, that, you know, kind of create the illusion we have to make a choice right now. So alignment is a process that uh, takes a little longer because it's, it's something that also makes us discover uh, some of these false beliefs that we have, some of these, these mindset problems that we have. 
All right, this is where mental coaching comes in. The fourth stage of self-healing is really, um, you know, to, to tune into this true self part of yourself, you know, to, to develop a more clear and more defined, more true vision of yourself. This is then when you realize how much of your sense of self, your identity, you know, and all the things that you thought you needed in your life and that you want it to be, that they're, you know, really just something that came in from the outside, what you were told or what the system or the religion or the parents told you. This is also where we realize how much of this outer influence is, is constantly replaying within ourselves in form of these critical inner voices and these, these, these uh, sort of this, this negative inner self-talk, all right? This is here where we have to learn to stand up, to grow up, to become more mature, to, to take self-responsibility, to talk back, you know, even to our inner negative voices. And this is then when we experience first real shifts in our lives, and namely that we can take our power back. We can take the power to make changes back, all right? But we have to learn how to be present enough, awake enough, all right, to even identify what it is that I need to realign or that I need to stop or that I need to shift. And that's then where, you know, sort of the, the, the energy healing comes in, namely cultivating this inner heart connection. This is then where we get this connection with our authentic, our true self, and we get inner guidance there. Everything that may have seemed random to us or karmic before then becomes a lot more clear. We can feel the info coming in and we, we begin to really feel connected uh, with sort of our, our higher self, okay, and how it guides us. And out of that then we develop the, the fifth stage of self-healing and that is where we feel some, something like a roadmap in us, a new compass. Okay, a navigator, I call this that, the heart's navigator. And we recognize that, you know, the road to happiness, fulfillment, you know, true love and joy and abundance, okay, unlimited abundance in, in health, wealth and love, all right, that that's really just a matter of cultivating, you know, this constant alignment, constant shift, sometimes clearing, sometimes calling us back to order, going in, in, back into self-awareness, right, and raising our vibration. That this is what raises our vibration. We call this integration, you know, this is the integration phase. And then we realize that self-healing or, you know, self-growth, improving, whatever you want to call this, depending on which level of your, of your being you, you, you look at it, is really just a matter of shifting my energy into a higher vibration relative to where it was before. And here you have the, the fundamental definition of what healing is. Healing means shifting my own vibration, my own energy, in a given moment, above or into a higher state relative to what it was before. This is where people get a little confused because they always think that, you know, ascension and enlightenment and so forth is, is up there and that this is the goal and that creates a lot of inner confliction, a lot of inner contradiction and so forth because we think in these linear terms. If you understand what I really mean with this relative to your previous state, okay, then you will begin to recognize that it is not about, you know, all or nothing. It is not about enlightenment. It is about learning that you have the power to change your vibration at any moment. And yes, the higher the energy that you align yourself to and the more you cultivate this and integrate this and embody this ultimately, the easier it gets. The more miraculous the manifestations in your life become. Miracles become easy then. Whether you know, it has to do with your health, Healing yourself, healing your physical condition, or healing your emotional condition. Entering true and loving relationships. Creating an abundance of beauty, an abundance 
of not just wealth, but also, you know, wealth in, like, say, connections with other people. You realize that that's it's just a continual process. That's not an event. This doesn't just happen when you're enlightened. Okay, this happens every time you shift your energy into a higher vibration. And there are, of course, several thresholds. I've talked about this before. Truth is a major threshold. Remember how I said liars can't heal? Liars can't heal because if we are not in truth with ourselves, if we lie to ourselves, we are unable to identify these things. We are unable to identify what is not self-sustaining, what is not true to us, and uh, you know where we sort of get pulled into self-sabotage. Our perception is skewed. All right, so truth is the is the fundamental threshold here for a, a, a self-propelled healing. So guess what? Self-healing, from my perspective as an energy coach, is really just the training of staying in truth with yourself. And as you do that, there is a self-propelling, natural harmony, natural resonance that sets in, that carries you. And then there is another threshold, that's then when things become miraculous, and that is when you really arrive in that heart consciousness at all times. But I don't want to go into woo-woo here, I really want you to understand that Self-healing and energy healing is actually a very technical thing. It's not as mystical as most people want to see it. It's very, very pragmatic, very, very hands-on. And I want to read some of your comments here. Gloria's commenting, There seems to be a fine line between changing of perspective into acceptance and removing, you know, uh, things in yourself, creating boundaries from the to toxic external circumstance and being in a powerful place instead of just giving in. Yeah. What I hear you say is that it's such a fickle thing, right? To not let, say, outer conditions impact us in, in a way that it removes us from seeing truth and then losing hope and, and not feeling in power. So this is why truth is such an important threshold. That's why truth training with ourselves is basically your insurance policy here. Because whenever you whenever your energy goes below truth, you know, below your ability to actually see things the way they are, you are unable to make specific changes. You can still um, train yourself to do incremental states, uh, changes. So that's the part here when I talk about how to shift our energy. You know, when you find yourself in, in the dark night of your soul, all right, it's, it's you know, uh, futile to, to, to beat yourself up because you're not enlightened in that state, okay? When you're in, in a really, really dark place with yourself and you feel completely separated, completely unwhole, completely disharmonic with yourself, it's a step-by-step -step process, all right? First, you have to find, you know, the, the energy to even, you know, wanting to do something about that. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Remembering that you can actually do something. Remembering that you have something like a true self. Remembering that you have, you know, a, 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 there is a part in you that is not that, that you don't identify with that dark night of the soul. Right? So you have to first shift your energy, perhaps through physical things. This is something that a lot of people are surprised about hearing. You know, that, that uh, physical changes, emotional changes, mental changes, are often, you know, the, the parts that are needed to really go into these big changes. And so many, especially energetically sensitive people and, and, and spiritually inclined people, you know, those who seek for, for deeper truths and so forth, uh, live in a misconception that they need to cut themselves off from their body and from their emotions. They don't realize, this is something that Annette mentioned earlier here, they don't realize that being in your heart includes all of these, includes the physical, emotional, mental, social, spiritual, and energetic part. So when your energy is extremely low and you can literally not get off the couch and cannot, you know, you, you feel like 
there's no sense to life. The only thing you can do at that very moment is a physical shift, is to get up from the couch, go into self-care, take a shower, go outside, all right? Get your physical energies, the densest part of your being, flowing again, you know, bring it into motion, all right? And then you'll see that your emotions, right? Your, your energies in motion, that they are bringing up things. And there, you know, is where a lot of us get stuck when we are in, in a low vibratory place because we get overwhelmed by our emotions. We are afraid of our emotions. Or worse yet, we judge our emotions because we've had these opinions, all right, that all emotions are low and that that's not part of enlightenment and that we have to separate ourselves from it. You see? Your intentions might be the right ones, but the way you approach it might be completely counterproductive, cutting ourselves off from our bodies and our emotions makes your energy stuck in a very low vibratory place. And it doesn't matter how much you've read and how much you know and how many different spiritual techniques or even fancy energy work techniques you know, you will not be able to out-vibrate that. You have to work with your body. You have to work with your emotions. You have to work with your beliefs and your mindsets. And the glue for all of this, right? This is We're talking about mending, harmonizing, unifying, merging, right? This is the definition of healing, right? The glue that can put this all together comes from a place deep within you. And that is self-care, self-love. And if you are, you know, spiritually inclined and see this in a larger perspective, it's actually the divine love, is this divine creation energy, okay, just due to the fact that you exist, that flows through, through you. And that is always there. And that is the one that can help you out of these really, really low places into a slightly higher place. And if you have trained this enough, you can make quantum leaps. You can get yourselves out of this dark night of the soul into a place of abundance, maybe within a few days or a couple of weeks. But for the most part, you know, if we are permanently stuck in inner conditions that don't allow us to shift our energy, then our self-healing process becomes very frustrating. Yes, sometimes, exactly, Sheila, sometimes it feels too much and it's a bit overwhelming. That's because, you know, we, 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 we don't have a roadmap in us. And this is the part here that I really want you guys to understand about self-healing, is that the roadmap is in you. The template is in you, okay? All you got to do is get or let go of all the things that you think you know and that you think you need to do and your opinions and your negative attitudes towards yourself. And to go into more inner union, you know, through breathing, meditating, you know, doing healthy, physical things, you know, the things that you ingest, the things that you expose yourself, you know, change the quality of that bit by bit. And you will see that your energy will naturally rise. And as it naturally rises, it doesn't feel that overwhelming anymore because now your inner conditions are better, so outer things no longer affect you that much. And that's like trampolining your way up, okay? So let's go through this here in, in, in fast forward, okay, what you can do physically. First, you got to look at your attitude towards your own body, okay? And then increase your awareness. You got to become more aware of what you ingest. What do you put into your body? And what do you expose yourself to? And how do you treat your body? And then connect more with your body. Maybe talk to your body. I talk to my body and like I would talk to my lover. I, talk, I call my body honey. And I thank it every day. I appreciate it every day. And that forms trust. And that forms sort of a greater sense of believing in yourself that you can do it. 
But it often means, yes, at first, it's like, oh my God, my attitude to myself is completely negative. I need to change the whole context of how I'm seeing my body. Not just lifestyle changes, but they are then part of the cultivation of that. For example, with the coronavirus here, you know, it's, we can't just sit there and wait till we, you know, get infected and live in the fear, you know, that we die. The, the, the most effective way of protecting yourself from the virus actually getting a, a, a grip on you is to strengthen yourself from within. Okay, you don't have to wait till there are vaccines or something. You don't have to wait for anything. You can do this right now. We already know a few things about the virus. We know it's extremely vitamin C sensitive. It's extremely sensitive to sunlight. It's extremely sensitive to your inner hydration levels and, you know, the viscosity inside of you. It's extremely sensitive, you know, to, to your, your uh, basically, your, your immune system's own first responses. So there's a lot you can do. And even if you get infected, there's still a lot you can do. Increase your vitamin C, your vitamin D through, you know, good quality foods and supplements. Go outside in the sun. Allow that natural sunlight, okay, that, that, is, that this virus is sensitive to, to take care of most of the clearing. Use water in all ways. So, you know, drink more water and also use it more for cleansing, you know, and hygiene, obviously. You know, pay more attention to your foods. Because there's a lot of foods out there, especially the processed foods, that lower your immune system. Take them out. Look at, you know, the things that you can do physically, you know, like mechanically. The vi this is what we know about the virus. The virus stays in your throat for four or five days before it replicates, you know, enough to, to invade, you know, most of the, the, the systems that it attacks. And it, it doesn't just attack our lungs, it attacks other systems as well. But there's a lot you can do in that phase. You can, you know, if you have a good feeling for your body, you can feel this when something ain't right. When, your, when your, your immune system is working on something. You can reduce the, the, the viral load, you know, the amount of viruses that actually enter your system through, for instance, hot beverages, healing teas. Okay, keeping your whole entire body in a, in a state of, of more fluidity. And hygiene, obviously, washing hands and face masks, you know, those are all kind of outer things, but it's more that the, the, your, your inner hygiene, okay, how much you ingest of toxic things. Because ultimately, you know, whether or not we become disease, uh, diseased or ill has to do with the load, you know, the, the toxic load in us. And so if we change the attitude you know, of our physical to a more self-sustaining and more positive attitude and, and seeing that our body has these phenomenal self-healing abilities that all we got to do is strengthen those or get ourselves out of the way for, for the most part, you know, by uh, changing the lifestyle habits that we have. Emotionally, again here, I want to really point your attention at your attitude towards your emotions. How do you truly feel? And how do you feel about what you feel? But do you actually allow yourself to feel? Most of you don't even allow yourself to really feel your emotions. Many of you judge your emotions and therefore suppress them. So how can I better express my, my true feelings? Not dump them or you know, project them onto others, but actually go into this sort of truthful state with myself about my emotions. And then mentally, obviously, the attitude and the beliefs and the, the opinions that I have and the whole sense of self, how I see myself. To work with this negative inner self-talk, guys, this critical inner voice, your super ego. Most of you are victim of your own inner darkness. If you actually pay attention to that, the, 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 the minimizing and degrading and self-defeating nature of your critical inner voice, you'll recognize that, first of all, that's the main reason why you can't believe in yourself and why you think you don't have any power. 
But if you actually work with it and allow yourself to see it for what it is, you'll find out that 98% of that isn't even yours. That's something you heard somewhere, it was a flashback or a recording or, you know, something you saw in a movie or something you heard your grandmother say to somebody else or your first grade teacher or your peers or whatever. It's recordings. That stuff that is going on in your mind that is not coming out of yourself, that's just sort of self-propelled outer stuff. And then when you go into understanding, you know, how much your, your attitude and with it also your perception is really censored and filtered and blind spotted, you know, then you can also see how much of your life is actually based on assumptions, misunderstandings, unrealistic expectations. But for the most part, you know, sort of like an almost insane mentalism, you know, seeking refuge in your head, which is then, again, what propagates the disconnection from body and from emotions socially look at your relationships with the external with your environment i don't just mean the planet but that too now what's your relationship with nature what's your relationship with people how do you see people how do you see humanity how do you see your partners your friends okay how do you Interact with them. What are your behavior patterns? Do you see them as hostile? Do you see them as something you got to protect yourself from? How often do you find yourself, you know, saying something, doing something that is not congruent to yourself, to what you truly want, or against your better knowing? How many of these social behavior patterns that we have in our daily lives are actually hurtful for ourselves? Codependency. You know, all this projection in our relationships, all this manipulation, you know, that is going on, that is trying to be better, trying to win, you know, competition, jealousy, envy, and so forth. That majorly impacts your energy. And of course, you know, in the process of that, you find out what your true motivation is. And your true motivation comes or leads you to finding out what your true heart's desire is. And that then leads you to a more harmonious, more congruent way of communicating, a way of interacting with others. You learn how to speak from your heart. And you will notice how much manipulation and how much stuff is going to fall away spontaneously. And then spiritually. When you go into looking at how much of your life has to do with your spiritual beliefs. And, you know, I'm not uh, referring to any particular spiritual belief, but your, your belief about what higher authority is, what higher power is. You don't have to believe in God to have a, a sense for higher power because we all do. This is part of our, our growing up, okay? Whether it's our parents or the Almighty Father or Source or the Divine, it doesn't matter. That's, that's, you know, part of how you relate to higher power and how many misconceptions we have there. And then, you know, to really go into this more spiritual process and asking yourself, how do I even define higher power? And if I want to tap into my inner higher power, all right, then I need to remove all the blocks that are there. And some of these blocks have to do with our uh, views, okay? Like what is karma? What is a soulmate, twin soul, and all this mysticism? Guys, I'll be the first one to go there with you and to, to really look at this. But I want you to know that most of what is out here is information about karma and soulmates and twin souls is complete bullshit. Okay? It mystifies and fantasizes things that are not based on what you're truly feeling. It idealizes things and guess what? It externalizes things again. And whenever we externalize things, we're giving away our power. And then the, the last layer, or basically the first layer, because as an energy coach, as an energy healer, I always look at that layer first. That's the energetic, the energetic, the energetic part of your being. How much, you know, is what I am actually aligning myself influenced by the outside, by collective programming, by collective energies. Now, what is mine, what isn't, okay? And how much of my personal life, you know, the, the person, the individual conditioning and the attachment and the implants and trauma and so forth that I've experienced, karmic relationships, karmic 
family karma and so forth and including my inner darkness and shadow how do they manifest energetically where do they keep me energetically those are my my personal barriers and when I go that far, and I know this all sounds overwhelming, but only if you, if you hear this with your mind. Try to hear all this with your heart. Or your aesthetic brain, if you will. Because you know, that's then the part that tunes you into the larger, into the more whole, holistic view. And you'll see, dang, it's really not that many things. It's maybe just one or two things. For most people, it's only one or two things that they need to change. Because it weaves through all these different layers of their being, okay? And then there are some technicalities that you can learn when you work on uh, with energy healing. You can increase your, your energetic lingo, you form your own lexicon of sensations, emotional literacy, you know, your, your energetic vocabulary. You become more aware of all these energies, inner and outer. You can read other people's energies. You know how they are feeling towards you better, you know, and... Your expression becomes more congruent, more effective, more powerful, all the way to, you know, eradicating some of your energetic habits that you also discover and, you know, becoming a self-master, a skillful self-master of your own energies. And then guess what? Abundance, wealth, health, love, just become a matter of you really connecting with your inner divine Wi-Fi, okay, and staying in harmony with it and listening to your inner guidance and trusting in your inner knowing. Yes, yeah, sometimes, you're right, sir, sometimes this, this also means we need to really stay away and actually oftentimes, for most people, this is where they have blind spots, stay away from certain things that are really impacting them negatively without them realizing it, such as news, yes, all kinds of stress, yes, absolutely. Good to see you, Justin. So I know this was a long talk here today. And it's difficult to show the larger context and the, the holistic aspect of being, you know, in five-minute explainer videos. But if you want to know more, then check out the play series is here on Facebook. Go to YouTube. There's a free energy training healing course that's very complex yes it is but mark my words guys it's really only just one or two things and we find them when we change our perspective our perception and then they become clear as day and all you need for this is truth and a little more light and a little more love and with that you can heal anything i know what that sounds like but that is truth so with those words, I would like to close our truth talk here today. I'm looking forward to talking to you next Sunday again. Please let me know if there are specific topics that you would like to cover. Because when I do these, these overall truth talks, all right, there's so many points here, you know, where I have so much more to share. But I would like to know from you what it is that you would like me to share about. Love you guys. See you next time.